Before getting deep into this monologue, I have to start off by saying this. That Major League Soccer has once again proven me wrong. Which is something that the league does a good job in doing. They proved me wrong by the performance of Lionel Messi. Last year, when the reports were talking about every team pitching in money to bring in less Messi to America, I was saying, why, why is the league going after guys after their prime? Fast forward to July 2023. Messi is nowhere near past his prime. If anything, it looks like he's just picking up where he left off in Europe. I don't see any signs of wear and tear on Messi. I don't see any signs of slowing down. Quite honestly, he kind of reminds me of LeBron James. A guy who's late in his years, still performing at a high level. A guy who's late in his years, outrunning guys who are much younger than him. Major League Soccer proved me wrong. This signing of Lionel Messi, this is nothing about retirement. And Leo Messi is not treating this as a retirement league. If anything, he has risen up the level of play in this league. Just based on his pure skill alone. Leo Messi is evolutionizing the game. And he's showing us that you don't have to be so Reliant on tactics. But skill. Trust. And chemistry. Are the three keys to success. Leo Messi only been around. For like what one week now. It has, well, has it been a full two weeks? Probably just been a week and a half. How can somebody. That's only been here a week and a half still be successful. It is not tactics. It is skill. It is trust. And it is chemistry. And Leo Messi is just proving my point based on what I said in monologue 180. The teams that are so focused on tactics they're overthinking things. They're stressing themselves out on their positioning on the field and what kind of formation they're in. Those are the teams that don't gel together. Look at Toronto. Toronto's a perfect example. You got the two Italians that's talking so much about tactics and want to put so much emphasis on tactics. It got to the point where they had to get rid of the current head coach because the Italians wasn't satisfied with the tactics. The coach is gone and Toronto is still struggling. We'll see how they perform against New York City FC tonight. Atlanta. I don't know what Atlanta's purpose was on that field. On Tuesday night in Fort Lauderdale. I don't know what kind of team that was. But one thing I know. That is not the Atlanta team that I know. That was a different team. You know, it could be fair for us to say. That Atlanta was starstruck. Not only the defense, even though the defense is getting a bulk of the blame for the loss. But that entire team was starstruck. There was times throughout that match where it just seemed like 
The team was moving in slow motion whenever Messi had the ball. And they were just anticipating on what he would do. So it, it was like a dream come true for a lot of the players. Like, wow, I'm really on the same field with a legend. What is the legend going to do? So it looked more like they were kind of fans. Just appreciating the opportunity to be on the same field with a legend. So. I'm, my criticism of Atlanta is not going to be too harsh. Because I understand what well, actually I don't understand because I never played professional sports before. But that's what it kind of looked like to me. But I do have two questions, two major questions for Atlanta United. Is Diego Amada truly the next Leo Messi? And who does the Atlanta offense go through? Does it go through Yakamakis? Or does it go through Diego Amada? That is something that Atlanta is going to have to figure out once they get eliminated from the League's Cup because I don't expect Atlanta to make a deep run in the League's Cup. I don't have them making it out this first round because the, the same team that struggled against Orlando right, um, recently before the League's Cup started is the same team that I've seen on Tuesday night. Atlanta lacks chemistry. It looks like Atlanta lacks trust. They don't lack skill. They do not lack skill. But the two things they lack the most, it looks as if they lack chemistry and trust amongst one another. Who is the true captain when it comes to the Atlanta offensive attack? Is it going to be Yakamakis or is it going to be Diego Almada? If Diego Almada is truly staying with Atlanta for the rest of the season, then it needs to be Almada. But it looks as if Yakamakis is fiercely competing to be that guy. It looks like Yakamakis wants to be that number one option in Atlanta. And you know what? I don't have a problem with it. Because as they sing in sports, competition brings out the best in everyone. And Yakamakis is saying, if you, Diego Amada, is truly the number one option, you have to beat it from me. You have to take it from me. You have to outplay me. Now, some may view that as selfishness. I don't view that as selfishness. I view that as competition. Because in this world of football, you're only one bad injury away from your entire career being over. And a lot of guys are trying to secure the bag. So there's nothing wrong with Yakamakis competing. Well, I made a to be that number one option in Atlanta. And if you're Diego Amada, I think you kind of got to be careful. With the noise, the outside noise, people telling you that you're the next messy, because if you get to relax, if you get too confident, then you lose that killer instinct, you lose that edge. That competitive edge, that competitive fervor that you have to be the best because you get too arrogant and you get too overconfident if you continue to listen to the outside noise that you are the next Messi. Diego Amada, if you are truly the next Messi, you still got to prove it on the field. And you have to 
take over this team as a whole and say, this is your team. Not in a, a antagonistic way now, but just your play on the field. Because right now, it looks like Yakumakis wants to be plan A of the offense. He wants the offense to go through him. He wants to be the focal point of the offense. So, Almeida, it's your job to match that intensity. When both Almeida and Yakamakis find some chemistry together, because both of them are playing at a high level. But the thing, the both of them lacks chemistry. So once the both of them find some way to develop some form of chemistry and trust one another, Atlanta will be all right. There's more than enough talent on this team to make the playoffs. But as of right now, Atlanta has chemistry and trust issues. And them getting eliminated early from the League's Cup will be a good thing because now the team will be able to go back to the drawing board and Almeida, if he's still staying throughout the season, and Yakamakis will have more time to practice with one another and find some way to figure it out on the field with one another. Look at Minnesota. Emmanuel Reynoso's Timu Puki, the South African Hongwe. It didn't take them long to form some, some type of chemistry. I think the thing is, one guy is, is going to have to be willing to say, okay, I'm not the guy, but I will enhance the top guy and help him be better. And as a result of that, I will be better. We'll find a way to cater to each other's needs. So that's something that Amaira and Yakamakis are going to have to work with together because right now, based on what I've been seeing from Atlanta, it looks like both of them are on a collision course to be the man, to be the face of Atlanta, which is not a bad thing, in my opinion. It's a good thing for the sake of competition. The bad thing is both of them lacks chemistry and trust with one another. And that's what I see. Now, the main message. Miami have outplayed their opponents thus far. And the reason they have been able to do so is not because of tactics, but it's because of three points that I have been that I have emphasized throughout this monologue so far. Skill, chemistry, and trust. Skill, chemistry, and trust is what have enabled them to look like one of the best teams in this least cup so far. I'm not gonna say they're the best team right now because Minnesota looks good. Columbus looks good. Cincinnati looks good. Philadelphia looks good. Atlas looks good. And speaking of Atlas, by the way, Atlas is the best team in that um that region that they're in with. NYCFC and Toronto. I got Atlas making it out. Atlas is my pick. So there's a lot of teams that's looking good right now. It's too early to say that Miami is the best team in the League's Cup. It's also too early to say that Miami is the most exciting team in the League's Cup. Because Minnesota is exciting. Dallas, the performance that Dallas put on Tuesday night, that was very exciting. So there's a lot of good teams. But what makes Miami to stand out the most is that they are winning these matches without focusing on tactics. And that's what us sports fans want. Us Typical American sports fans, 
We are not thinking about tactics. P. Diddy sitting in the stands. He's not thinking about formations when it comes to soccer. DJ Cali, he's sitting in the stands in Fort Lauderdale. He's not thinking about tactics. Those guys just wants to see the best players put on a show. And Lionel Messi understands that. Skill makes up for tactics. Your talent makes up for tactics. Chemistry. Chemistry makes up for tactics. Look at Lucho Acosta and Brandon Vasquez in Cincinnati. They're not going through what Atlanta is going through with Yakamakis and Amara. Lucho and Brandon feeds off of each other's success. They feed off of each other's skill in Cincinnati. And that's why Cincinnati is in the driver's seat to win the supporter shield. Because Lucho and Brandon, they have chemistry. They have trust with one another. And it's the same in Miami. The guys trust Messi. The guys believe in Messi. The guys are not trying to outperform Messi. They are feeding off of Messi's skill. I give you an example of how skill, chemistry, and trust makes up for tactics in the Miami game against Atlanta. Whenever Messi was double teamed, it provided more opportunities for other players. Robert Taylor. Do you believe that Robert Taylor would have scored those two goals if Messi wasn't on that field? If Messi and Busquets wasn't on that field, do you honestly believe that Robert Taylor would have been able to score those two goals? Another guy that stood out to me was Ben Kramaski. I'm, I'm sure Ben Kramaski was on the team before Messi came, but he... He, he didn't get my attention until Messi's arrival. Ben Kromoski, the guy plays with a lot of energy. And if that game would have lasted a little longer, he probably would have got at least one goal into. Ben Kromoski, you remember that name? European fans, you know, La Liga fans, Serie A fans. Remember the name Ben Kramaski. He could definitely be a record sell for Miami someday. His contract is up in New Year's Eve 2025. He can be a record sell on Christmas Day 2025. I see a lot of potential in Ben Kramaski. And the fact that he will be with Lionel Messi throughout his entire contract with Miami, he'll get to play with Messi. Through, through the rest of 2023, he, he got time to play with Messi all of 2024. He will have all of 2025 season. So come Christmas time in 2025, he can be uh, the, the biggest record sale, the biggest sale in inner Miami CF history. So just keep that name in mind. He didn't score, but there is a lot of things he did on that field on Tuesday night that got my attention. And, it, and if you if you choose to, when you go back to watch the game, you'll see what I'm talking about. Messi understands that he doesn't have to be the smartest guy on the field. Because his skill, chemistry, and trust, it leads the way. He already knows the guys trust him because he is the GOAT. Now, when it comes to the chemistry, I don't know how he was able to do it so fast. It probably goes in line with the trust. See, when guys believe in you, they're, they're, they're going to want to work with you. They're not going to want to, there's not going to be any pushback. There's not going to be any form of antagonism. So that's how trust and chemistry comes to get co coincides with one another. Diego Amada and Yakamakis. When the players trust each other, they're going to want to follow the one who is the guy. Or, or even if there's one that's not the guy, they're going to want to 
work with each other. That's what chemistry is about, working with each other. And because the Miami players trust Leo Messi, they're all working with each other. You don't hear about Joseph Martinez and Leo Campana complaining about not being the guy. They know it's not about that because they know that playing with the GOAT will benefit their career. Playing with the GOAT will boost their career. And whenever Leo Capana gets to a point where he is healthy consistently, that could be a possible another record sale for Miami someday. But who knows? We'll see. Miami would be even better once Leo Capana, he has to find a way to stay healthy consistently because he is still needed. Messi came to MLS because he wants to leave the game in joy. He don't want to be stressed out over tactics. He wants to enjoy the game. And that's what playing soccer in America is about. Playing soccer in America is about enjoying the game. His joy of the game, Messi's joy of the game reminds me of Chicharito. This is what Chicharito has been talking about when it, when it comes to having fun. LA Galaxy. This is what Chicharito has been talking about when it comes to having fun, enjoying the game. Skill, chemistry, and trust overrides tactics. See, when it comes to tactics, it's too much thinking. When it comes to tactics, it's too much stress. But when everybody has chemistry, when everybody has trust with one another, when guys are able to allow their skill to make plays for one another, it's much better. The game is much fun to watch. The game is better to watch. And now you may be wondering, okay, what if, what if um, the opponent have like a tactical press what do you do in that situation it's skill once again someone come coming coming up close to you look skill opens skill provides opportunities that can't be explained skill can't be explained you either got it or you don't and messi got it messi has it and because he has it Messi is evolutionizing the game because he's letting us know that you don't have to put emphasis on tactics to be successful. And this is why I hope that Miami wins the League's Cup, even though I, my preseason pick was Columbus. Hopefully Miami can prove me wrong. Skill. Chemistry. And trust are the keys to success. And Messi is showing us that right now. Do you want to be like? Do you want to be like? Do you picture me like? Do you picture me like? Where will I be when I grow up?